Hey listeners, you're listening to the Bible Bros Podcast. This is part one of three of my conversation with youth pastor at Redeemer Covenant and biblical studies major, Eric Giuseppe Ramazzini. Hope you enjoy. Hey everybody, welcome to the Bible Bros Podcast. I am your host, Tim Giorso. Uh, Bro Neal, unfortunately, is not on the show today. We're going to be back hopefully next week with Matthews chapter 3 and 4, so be looking forward to that. But I do have, on the bright side, I do have a special guest and a good friend of mine, Mr. Eric Giuseppe Ramazzini, who, if any of you remember, we actually did a podcast in the past we did. called Eats. <laughs> we did. Eric and Tim Sports. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> we talked a lot of uh, NBA finals, I believe, that year. Yeah, it was, it was uh, championship finals were going on. It was, it was fantastic. It was what? It was Warriors, Cavs. Was that the, the one when they came back 3 1? Was yeah, it that they year? Yeah, did. Yep. Man. So long ago. It was what so memories. good. What memories. What great memories. <laughs> what great memories. And I'm super happy to have Giuseppe back on the I'm podcast glad to be today. Here. I'm happy to have you. Now, Giuseppe is uh, actually in ministry currently. Tell us a little bit about I know you went to William Jessup. I know you're currently, just recently became a youth pastor. Give me a little background on your your history in that way. Yeah. So, yeah, I went uh, to Jessup, graduated with a biblical studies degree. Um, so This man knows what he's talking about, okay? <laughs> More qualified than me, all right? So you know who to listen to. <laughs> hey, but no, you just, as long as you spend spend time in the Word, I think, God will reveal so much to us. Um, but yeah, so biblical studies degree at William Jessup, um, graduated this last semester, and a youth pastor for junior high and high school at a church here in Orangeville called Redeemer Covenant. Um, so yeah, it's been kind of a whirlwind these last couple of years and these last couple of months, but it's been fantastic just seeing where God will continually guide. Um, yeah, it's been awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to have someone who's been through, you know, biblical studies on the show, I yeah. think it gives you a lot of credibility. And really, I'm really, uh, li- maybe, I'm really looking forward well, to picking your brain. Probably not too much. <laughs> <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> too That's modest. That's too <laughs> modest. So I look forward to picking your brain today um, and learning a lot myself. Briefly, I would love if you just give your brief kind of testimony, like how yeah. you, you know, maybe came to the Lord. What, what, yeah. why did you choose to believe in Jesus and kind of follow this path? Yeah. So I grew up in the church. Um, that was kind of my background. My family was Christian. We always just, we lived at the church. Like, that's what it was. Um, and it was great, but there's so many questions that I always had. There's so many questions, and it felt like every time I asked so many of them, I never had a, an actual response. It was kind of always dancing around the question, and it was always hard for me to kind of follow a religion that I was unsure about. Um, and over the years, kind of going into junior high and high school, um, it was kind of really a moment of who who am I trying to find out who we are um, trying to gain your own identity and for me is really trying to figure out what what does it look like if God if there is a God and if God truly loves me why 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 does he you know um, so it was a really big time of self evaluation and reflecting though I had so many questions I realized that there are more questions without God. There are more questions that I can't answer without him. Um, mm. There are more reasons for me to believe in God than there are to not believe. Mm. Um, and that was a big stepping point in my faith. That was a, there was a moment in, in my high school that we we're talking about obedience when God continues calling. And I had a relationship with God, but I wouldn't. I was kind of always masking myself. At church, I'm one person. Outside of church, I'm a completely different person. Um, and I understand hypocrisy shouldn't be in, in the church, but so often we're so broken as well still. Um, Christians aren't perfect. Um, mm. Amen. <laughs> right. <laughs> so there's a point that it was God was really just speaking, hey, you're not letting me guide you. You're not letting me be the person that you're loving and that you're trying to follow. Um, you're the one that is dictating your life. You're the one that you want to follow um, and for worldly desires. So those was a big moment for me to be like, God, you're right. I do want, though I have so many questions um, and thankfully so many of them I've gotten great responses to and I've grown in my faith since then so much. Um, though I do not know all of it and I don't know if anyone does, uh, I know that God has continually put people around me um, to help me grow in my own faith and help me 
read the Bible in certain ways that um, just understanding a little bit more of what the Bible actually is uh, has yeah. helped tremendously. Um, so since then, it was kind of a, still a battle back and forth between my own desires and God's will for me. Um, so it was always my will and his will kind of always um, in conflict. And even since high school, God has kind of co- always called me to ministry. And I remember in high school just being like, nah, I'm not going into ministry. <laughs> There's no money yeah, in it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. There is no... Oh, man. So frustrating. Um, but God continued to call. God continued to, to reach out and... There's moments in our lives that we have to say, God, it's your will and not mine. Um, and though there's difficulties in it, I'm so glad for the life that he's given me um, and my wife, Emmy, the places that he's put me in. Um, he's given me more life than any amount of money or any other idea um, of what I would want to do could actually give me. Um, mm. So yeah, it's been, it's been a long journey and it continues to go on, um, but it's been fantastic. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And I totally agree. It kind of popped in my mind when you are talking about how there's more reasons to believe in God than there are yeah. not to. I totally feel that. In fact, I had a pastor tell me one time that whenever he meets somebody who, let's say, is an atheist, so they don't believe in any, any yeah. of the religions yeah. or in Christianity, and he said, hey, another man of faith. And the person's like, what are you talking about? I have no faith. I, I'm an atheist. And he's like, well, actually... <laughs> <laughs> any, any, any belief you have that's requires funny. faith in it, right? Because yeah. no one really knows yeah, how yeah, the earth was started. True. No one sure. really knows. No one was there. Yeah. No one. Yeah. So each of us has faith. You yeah. think you may think you don't have faith, but whatever belief you have, whether you're an mm. atheist, whether you're a Buddhist, whether you're Hindu, yeah. you have faith in that belief yeah. that that's what's true. Now, what's behind that faith and how much reason or logic or evidence behind that faith, that differs for each person. Yeah. But I would say that the reason I have chosen Christianity as the, the belief system, the, the you know following God, is because I think that it actually requires less faith than mm. it does to believe that just there was yeah. nothing, and then the world just oh boom, there was just something that came from sure. nothing, and then like that's interesting. Like yeah. what? Like sure. <laughs> like I get that God, the idea of God's like far fetched yeah. as well if you really think about it. Yeah. But like, what's more far fetched? The fact that like <laughs> we have a purpose and like everything you see yeah, is it's, is, it's all crazy. is being <laughs> yeah. created by someone sure. or that just literally there was nothing and then just yeah. poof sure abracadabra there was something you know that requires a lot of faith yes. to believe in that yeah so and all of that also ties in to how how we read scripture how do we read the bible um there's so much to that but i i definitely agree um you believe in something you everyone do, does everyone does That's or, why or you believe people, in nothing but you still believe it <laughs> you know when people would say like oh i don't i don't have a religion or not religious and in my mind i'm like well, technically, a religion is a belief system, sure. really. So you are religious. Yeah. You just don't know it. Even if you, you're you have a you agnostic, you have a belief system. Atheist, whatever you are. Yeah, you believe, believe in something, in something. <laughs> you, or you believe in the the belief of nothing. <laughs> and that's still <laughs> a belief. Still that is still a belief, correct. even though it's yeah. nothing. That's still yes. you're believing. You're believe putting your faith in. Hey, I'm going to die and become a tree when yeah. I die, or yeah. I'm going to die and sure. nothing happens. Sure. Right? Yeah. You have to have faith in that. So believe everyone that. has faith in something. I put my faith in Christianity just like you do. And we are here because, of course, in the Bible Bros. This actually would have been a great podcast to even do before me and Ronil's first one. Because we're actually going to talk about kind of like what is the Bible? What is this thing? Why should we read it? Why, if if you're out there, whether Christian or not Christian or Buddhist or whatever your faith is in, why pick it up? What's the point? Is there something that's going to benefit me? Is it going to be like an interesting read that keeps me entertained for a couple hours? Right. Yeah. Why? Yeah. And the third question we're going to tackle is, you know, how do we trust that this is an accurate book? Mm-hmm. How do we know this isn't a book of just made up stories, right? Sure. So that's kind of what we're going to go into, and I want to kind of pick your brain on a few things. So first off, I know this is kind of a broad question here, but I mean, what is the Bible in your mind? What is? It? <laughs> yeah, um, that is such a loaded question, <laughs> but it's 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 a vital one that we all have to come to terms with. Um, we as Christians probably have maybe not intentionally but have come to terms with Um, I'm going to steal it completely from there's there's another group called the Bible Project and what they continually say is the Bible is a story that leads to Jesus that is the ultimate purpose and the ultimate reason for the Bible Um, 
66 different books that talk about one climactic story in Jesus Christ, in the four Gospels, and constantly getting back to this ideal of a relationship and a partnership with from humanity and God that he's always desired. All of it is a story that continues to bring, it, bring forth one aspect of God wanting to be in a relationship with humanity. And there's so many books that continue talking about that. But all of it is a story that leads to Jesus, and we have to read it as such as a narrative. It is the 66 books are narrative talking about, ultimately talking about one person. Um, but in this big grand scheme of hum, human nature and God's nature and Israelite culture and history and poetry and wisdom and so, so apocalyptic literature, there's tons, there's so mm. much. Um, That's a good point, right? There's, if you think of it, the, the Bible is essentially, it's a historical text. Mm-hmm. Right, it's a, it's a text yeah, that we parts, know. Yeah. We know these authors were real. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, sure. we know that we have other historians that back up these authors as yeah. real people. This Definitely. really happened. Yes. Um, it's it's a it's a book of poetry. Yeah. We have a lot of books in the Bible that yeah. that are poet are yeah. poetry. We have um, a third of the Bible is poetry. A third of the Bible is poetry. A third of the Bible. It's <laughs> a lot. It's a big portion of. So how do we read poetry, right? Oh, boy, <laughs> what that's is a poetry? Whole, that's a whole other. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a whole other conversation other. right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a book of, of wisdom. Yes. It's a book of, you talk about all the different proverbs and these different books in the Bible that just that just give you really good advice, whether you're a Christian or not, honestly. Yeah. Like, yeah. you don't have to be a Christian to open up the Bible, look no. at some, some verses and proverbs and be like, wow, that's really good advice. Yeah. Like, yeah. I should, I'll look, I'll think about doing that, yeah. you know? Because so, I want to, everyone is looking to better their life. Everyone is looking to help other people better their lives. And yeah. So it's a, it's a book of wisdom. Hopefully, it's a historical right? book. That's a good point. Never mind. I shouldn't say everyone. The hope would be that. It's a desire. Uh, I don't know that's if good. that's... It's really good. But we're looking to better ourselves. I think mm. so many of us... Deep down. Deep down. I feel like things get in the way. Yeah. But I think every human, like, deep down wants to be yeah. a better person. It's just... At people times, have given up on sure. that sometimes. Well, you know? yeah. Better ourselves. The problem is at times it comes to the detriment of someone else. We look mm. to better ourselves no matter what happens to other people. And I think that's uh, it's a disconnect that, that becomes hard. I also think that, that because people, people, you know, inherently, okay, we want to better ourselves. We want to better, yeah. Yeah. you know, deep down. But if we don't have a way to navigate that, if we don't sure. have a, a book or a, <laughs> a something yeah. to go to, to point us in the right Definitely. direction, then we're kind of left to our own devices and left to, well, I think this is right, so yeah. I'm going to go for it. Left to our own wisdom. Left to our own wisdom, right? So that's, again, the purpose of the Bible is like, here's this this historical book that keeps us in relationship with Jesus that preserves morality, Mm -hmm. right? Where would we be in this this world if we didn't have morals? Everyone has morals. Some are kind of a sliding scale with different people, but but we need some sort of, like, manual Mm -hmm. to live as humans. And that's kind of... I kind of look at the Bible. It's kind of of a manual in a way. I mean, that's that's a very... That's a very... (laughs) simplistic sort of yeah i um, think way of looking at it yeah. as far as crude that's a very crude way of looking at it yeah and i think <laughs> there and that's where where we get to that question of what is the bible um in its most in its simplest form i think we have to come to a point to say it's a story that leads to jesus because if we read it as specifically a manual or a, an instruction book right uh, there's a, the acronym for the Bible is um, basic instructions before leaving Earth. <laughs> yeah. I never heard that before. No, it's really uh, good. Uh, no, I don't know if it's correct. <laughs> I don't know um, because, like you said, there's so much poetry, there's wisdom, that's apocalyptic true. literature. It's mm. not all teaching. It's not all a book do of this laws. Or do that. Yeah, it isn't. Yeah. Um, it a lot of it is not. Most of it isn't that. Um, mm. So if we read it as a book and a story that leads to Jesus, even in the midst of, there are teachings. Second Timothy writes about that the, the scripture are for teaching, and that is good, but that might not be solely what it's for either. It's a book that leads us to Christ. Mm. Um, mm. 
mm. even in the midst of the loss, even in the midst of instruction, instructing our own lives and developing the ways that we see the world, developing perspectives, um, a vision and a viewpoint of looking through a lens of the Bible, looking through the lens of the cross, looking through the lens of Jesus and seeing the world um, in the way that he's always called us to. Mm-hmm. That at times looks like instructions, but at other times it looks like wisdom and poetry and mm. symbols and so much of it symbolic and metaphors and sim- there's so so many I, I think the reason that I described it in that way I was more thinking about let's say I'm somebody who <clears throat> let's say I was raised in a family where they taught me that like it's totally fine yeah. to like beat other people up sure okay right? yeah so okay. I've just grown up my parents yeah totally beat that guy up he was a guy's great, right <laughs> so like me you know being okay I'm just, I'm just saying I'm a good person I'm trying to do yeah, the right thing right up, and so I start I'm beating people up all the time okay. because that's what I've been taught is yeah. okay mm. right okay. what 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 thing uh, teaches me yeah. that that's not okay that I just True. don't go around beating everyone up yeah right that's that would be the Bible True. that would be this yeah. book that's been tested and that's it's been good. accurate that kind of oh wow okay the Bible talks about well, don't just go beat everybody up, sure. right? Yeah. That's not a yes. good thing to do. That's, you're going to yeah. hurt other okay. people. Or you're going to hurt yourself. I oh, understand. but I didn't know that, right? I needed this this sort of yeah. sort of it's manual, a, if you will, or story, you know, story about it. I needed this thing to, to be reveal. Like, oh, yeah. I didn't realize I was hurting these other people by yes. just going around beating everybody up yeah. because I was taught ignorance is bliss. You know, yeah. And that, that's what it's kind of for. Is it, you don't know. You don't a, know. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's like we're all trying to do the right thing. Yes. But if we were brought up in homes, which is so so common now with people yeah. coming up in broken homes, where they don't have two parents or all these situations that are stressful, and there's a lot of science on kids' upbringing and how that affects them when when things aren't stable at home, it creates a lot of issues for kids. They have a lot of problems when yeah. they get older, Definitely. and and that they. Were, could potentially have been taught things that are not beneficial for themselves or others. Sure. So where do they learn? Where do they go to, to realize that, yeah. oh, I need to, that's not the things I should be doing if I want to better myself and better others. Yes. And I think that would be, the Bible is, is an awesome source, whether you're Christian, whether you're not, for that deep human desire of bettering yourself and bettering others. Yeah, we all have a perspective or a worldview of our, the environment around us. And that's developed through our up bringing in in our parents or the family that we've had um, the environment that we live in in our up, in our upbringing the teachers that we have invested in us this, the religion that has poured into us that all culminates into this view of the world that we have in this perspective and the Bible really is trying to boil it down and break it apart to say that the true perspective that we're called to live is love your God and love your neighbor as yourself and when we view it through scripture and we view our lives in that it changes our perspective into a Christian perspective um, and that radically changes our lives um, with certain instructions in the Old Testament but not many like there's some random laws that you're like why would it why would we follow this <laughs> like for us I don't have a goat that I can boil in milk like what are you, what are you even talking about what's well, culturally we're not israelites you know we don't live in the same culture and we need to remember that as well we don't live in the same time we need to remember that as well this book especially the old testament was written three four five thousand years ago we're in the 21st century as you say that because i've heard the the argument a lot of people say is oh well that's what that's the reason not to read the Bible or not to follow uh, the yeah, Bible sure. is because oh, but that's how they used uh, to do things. Yeah, 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 that was yeah. like the old nah, way, yes. you know. We don't, yeah, we're not sure. culturally we're not like that anymore, sure. right? Yeah. And so I okay, no, yeah, that's I just wanted true. to make sure that like a lot of what's mm. in the Bible is timeless, very timeless, yes. timeless advice, yeah, timeless poetry, timeless yeah. stories. Yeah. And that, yes, the context is absolutely important, right? Yes. Absolutely important. You have to look at, well, what was the culture at the time? Mm -hmm. And why were those laws in place at the time? And maybe they were in place because that specific culture needed these specific things to function. But a lot of what's in the Bible is, like, very applicable. And that's what we're going to go into a little bit later is why the Bible, like, me and Giuseppe here, we've applied the Bible in our lives. We've studied. Mm -hmm. I'm a big person. I love science. Like, I... Yeah. I'm like falling oh, in love right. with science yeah. more and more every day, yeah. which I thought I would always hate science growing up. I was, I was like the worst <laughs> class. Like I barely passed chemistry. Yeah. But I'm realizing more and more like how much science backs up what the Bible's saying and the advice yeah. that's given and the, the truth that's given. And we'll kind of go into a little bit about that in yeah. a little bit. 
Hey listeners, I hope you enjoyed the first half of the podcast. Before we get to the second half, I'm going to quickly talk about what we went over. We started off with Giuseppe's testimony, then we went into talking about the Bible and how the Bible is a book of poetry, it's a book of history, and it's a book of wisdom and knowledge and insight that anybody is applicable to anybody. Next, we talked about our faith and how we think it actually requires less faith to believe in Christianity because of the historical accuracy because of the the biblical principles that are backed by science and because of all the wisdom and knowledge that it contains, it's really not that crazy to go out on a limb to believe in Christianity where some other faiths and religions like Buddhism or Hinduism or atheism, those require a lot of faith to believe in them because of the lack of the the documentation and the lack of, you know, scientific um, backing. Also, we talked about kind of morals and how we think the Bible being the source of morals and truth that kind of God has has given us and ways to kind of, hey, God's like, hey, this is the way to live and this is what's going to be most benefit to you. We think it's kind of the ultimate source of that. And so we sort of understand that humans were brought up sometimes in environments where we're taught not to do things that are, you know, right or beneficial. We're taught to do think wrong. We're taught to um, do things wrong, not on purpose, not because someone is purposely trying to teach us what's wrong. It's based off of their what they think is right or wrong or their their background or what they've been taught and how we all need the Bible to go to. Even the people that taught you what's right or wrong, they also have uh, have to go someplace to get their right and wrong. And we think the Bible is pretty much the ultimate source of kind of morals and being able to differentiate between right and wrong and what's beneficial and what's not. And everyone's trying to do the right thing, but we all have so many different ideas of what the right thing is based on what we've been taught in our experiences. So we need kind of one source of that information so that we can all kind of be on the same page. So anyway, uh, well, let's get back to part two and hope you enjoy. Thanks. So, why should you read it, right? Yeah. And I'm specifically more going to talk to those of you who aren't Christians, because as Christians, we are consistently told and encouraged all the time, hey, read the Bible, read the Bible. Yeah. So, I'm going to more, I'm more speaking to people who have different faith and belief systems, who maybe you're agnostic, or maybe you're atheist, or a Buddhist, or Hindu, and you're like, why should I read the Bible, right? Why would I read the Bible? Why would I read this book about this belief system that I don't believe in? Sure. Right? Yeah. And I would just make the argument that, um, again, there's, again, we're we're trying to look for what's the most true, yeah. and I think that regardless of what you are, even if let's say you want to strengthen your own belief in Buddhism, mm. <clears throat> you want to read kind of the other books of the other different belief systems to kind of see and like test out. Okay, well they say this, mine says this. What's the truth here, right? Yeah. And you kind of dig into that and then find out. Oh wow, you know maybe that is more true, or maybe mine is more true, right? So. I think the only way to be really about sure about your own faith is to kind of to look into others as well and kind of study that as well to see if that if, the, if what's what's really true right what is yeah. what is science back up about your faith system what is your own like personal application back up about it and so I would encourage anyone to read the Bible because I just I personally think there's just so many just truthful things right yeah. you were talking about revealing like we read the Bible because we want to we want to take this veil off our off our eyes yeah right i think that's a, that's a perfect example like you want truth to be revealed some people don't always want to see truth revealed because no, truth don't. is hard <laughs> yeah. truth can be hard right be. if you think if you believe yes. that you're like an amazing singer yeah right and yeah. then you go on to american idol and uh, simon cowell goes like dude you're the worst destroys right you. that hurts yeah the truth hurts right like it's not always but now fun. you know. <laughs> but at least now you know not to maybe waste your time spending <laughs> 10 hours a day and yeah. spending all your money on singing lessons, right? Yeah. It, it still reveals a truth that needs yeah. to be heard regardless of how you still feel hard. about it. But, yes. but it's hard. Yeah. And it's a tough road if you really are seeking what's really true, right? And if you're someone who, you want to know where you go when you die. I've, I've, I have friends who their biggest fear is death because right. they don't know where they're going. Yeah. And I'm like, you, if you want to have this fear assured or you want to figure out, like, you have to find what's true. And yeah. you have to start digging and find out where am I going when I die, and where do you go? You like look at these different religions. You look at Christianity because hopefully one of them will give you something that you can find rest in, right, and have more peace in your life about where you're going when you die. 
Yeah. So that's that's kind of why I would read it and yeah. why I, why I choose to read it because I don't always want to. It's not always it, it's it's hard for me to read the Bible. I'll admit sometimes like it's it's hard. Sometimes I get anxiety reading the Bible. To be honest, because um, I, I have a history of anxiety disorders and. And it's hard for me, um, but I still continue to push through and seek it because I, I just have seen so many things that have come true in my life and so many ways I've applied it in which like, wow, that was so true about this. There's something about this book that is so truthful yeah. and I don't want to live blinded. I don't yeah. want to live a life where I'm hurting other people thinking that I'm doing the right thing. Yeah, right? yeah and you can come to the Bible, anyone, if you've read it or not, I think one of the biggest changes that happens is you realize and you see that you are more valuable than you had ever thought, um, which is crazy. You are worth more than we think of, of ourselves. And the Bible shows us that you are worth so much that God would give anything for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and it instills the self-worth um, not just for yourself, but for others, it it gives us a kind of this like this value in humanity um, mm-hmm. that we can see ourselves as valuable. That I can see you, Tim, as valuable. That I'm called to see everybody as valuable, um, and that God values them. And that's I think the Bible brings out that so so much. Um, yeah, mm, that's really good. I, and I I forget to mention that sometimes I get I get caught up in and things but you're right like that's another it's it's beyond being an instruction manual quote unquote yeah. or a story about Jesus it's a story about you and it's a story about how valuable yeah. you are yeah. I remember having a com- I remember we had a conversation one time where we were talking about let's say that you took like just two basic beliefs say you took the belief of um, like atheism right there's okay. no God yeah. we just poof we're here um, you took the belief that there is a God there's this being that's beyond time that has always existed right both of these ideas are pretty like wow, that's pretty out there, right? Yeah. Like, how can we know those are true? Right, just based on those two. Now, if you have a choice between the two and they're both equally as, gosh, I don't know, would you pick the one where it's like, essentially, you you are worthless. You just poof, you were here. You There's no real purpose to you existing. It was kind of an accident. Yeah. Um, you just, you're here to live and then you die and that's it. And just like, yeah. are you, you know, you just try to live happy or try to get most you can out of life. Or do you, hey, do you choose this, this belief where, hey, this God literally created you for a purpose, literally had a purpose in mind when he looked at you, um, is someone that is going to follow you throughout your whole time on earth, is going to be like your best friend you've ever had, who's going to be the most consistent person in your life that you've ever had, who's going to be the most consistent emotional support you've ever had in your life, who's going to be your most consistent advisor, who's going to be your most consistent therapist, who's going to be your most consistent everything. Gosh, which one would you choose? Yeah. And it just blows my mind that someone would, oh, I'm still going to choose the one that's like, it's meaningless. Yeah. And you know? yeah, and I think a lot of times we can see it as like well it's right, Christianity is like why would I want to believe in like just this god that's going to rule my life, right? He's just going to control everything that I do and rule all all of me every day and it's going to be just terrible and I just follow him and with instructions and all that. Um but God is from the beginning of the Bible, the first pages Yes, he's the king of kings. Yes, he's, he's God, and he's, he's the ruler. Um, but he's given us value and calling us to rule with him. He mm. gives us an opportunity to rule with him, to be like him, to actually be like partners. Um, no other religion actually does that. Um, God calls us and wants us and desires us to build a relationship with him so that we can partner with him in being rulers together, being co-rulers and, and priests, being kings and queens together, um, which is, that's mm. like a huge yeah. responsibility, but that's so crazy. It gives us this value. God has, sees us as valuable, as worth something, as worthwhile, not just us, but all of creation, all, all of everything God sees as worthwhile. Um, and we've called, we're called to that same view as well. Mm. Mm. Oh, and, I, and I think too, or, you know, reading the Bible, it gives you a good sense of, like you said, it gives you a good sense of your worth. Yeah. I think a lot of people put, essentially, without Jesus, you kind of have to put your worth in something, right? What makes me valuable? Yeah, that's true. And a lot of people put yeah. their worth in 
maybe like I'm a great basketball player and so your sense of self-worth is in being a basketball player but what happens the day when you tear your knee and you can't play basketball anymore and now you suck at basketball because you can't play right are you now worthless because you can't play basketball you run into issues like that when you don't have a source that gives you your worth and that's another benefit of reading the Bible is like you get a sense of your worth in Jesus and how Jesus views you and how he thinks about you and how he's like he just thinks about you in such awesome ways and how positive and consistent emotionally he is towards you and he'll again there's Bible verse he'll never leave you nor forsake you have you ever had a human friend who has left you who has abandoned you I'm sure we all have had people in our lives maybe even parents God forbid you have a parent who abandoned you right right and mm. like how, how, how would it how would it be to have a relationship with somebody who will literally never abandon you can't abandon you it's it, it's it's impossible for him to yeah. abandon you like I, that that is another benefit of the Bible that you're getting is like oh my gosh now I know how to feel about myself now I know what I'm worth yeah that's there's power in that definitely even to the extent like Jesus doesn't didn't just care for you like if we believe this like he he died for you like mm-hmm. he died for yes his friends and his family but he died for in some sense complete strangers that he didn't ever know you know as far as in his human form like he yeah. didn't actually know us but he knew us even in a farther extent and he died for us like that's crazy uh, like this is a, <laughs> um, a short it, it, did you ever watch um, the movie uh, what's the what movie is the? Give me some, give me some hints or something. The here. Joker. Uh, it's all the Batman, um, Christian Bale. No, it's all the Joker. Suicide Squad. Suicide oh, okay, Squad. Okay, okay. Do you ever watch Suicide Squad? I did watch Suicide Squad. Okay, so there's a scene where Joker and Harley are together before Harley becomes a Harley, kind of, mm-hmm. and they're about like above the chemical vats and everything, and he says to her, "Hey, would you would you die for me?" And she says yes, and he, right before she, he answers, he's like, "Wait, no, that's that's too easy. Would you live for me?" And she says Ooh. yes. And I I was sitting there watching that movie. I was like, whoa, like that's so... At times I think we can we can be like, man, death is like the, the extreme, right? Like if I died for somebody, that's like, man, I'm giving everything. But like Ooh. death is one choice, one moment. But oh, living man, I'm for getting somebody. Goosebumps right now. Right? It's crazy. Oh. And I was, as I was watching that movie, I was, I was just like, thinking about like Jesus literally, you know, yes. let's say let's say we're just choosing to believe here. Jesus yeah, is God, yeah, right? Yeah. If whoever you are, just just hypothetical. Yeah, hypothetical. If you don't believe yeah. whether that's totally cool. You think yeah, Jesus yeah. is God, right? Yeah. So he he's up there on his throne in heaven, like I'm God. You yeah. know, blah blah blah, right? Now he's gonna actually choose to become a human. Yeah. He's gonna choose to be in a human form yeah. to have human issues yeah. that we have, yeah. and human like yeah. desires a, and like yeah, which kind of sucks sometimes, yeah. right? Yeah. In, a, in a world yeah. full of sin, a yeah. world full of like chaos. It's chaos. Chaos. Like, he, he's choosing to, yeah, not only die, not only, like, suffer in the yeah. worst imaginable way that someone yeah. could ever suffer, yeah. um, but also live yeah. and have to deal with yeah. human issues and yeah. human persecutions and human struggles that you and I have on a regular yeah. basis. Yeah. And That's the, good. And wow. the, one of the craziest, he lives for the people that kill him, right? Like, he lives for, for those who crucify him. He mm. lives for, even for us, that we have... If you believe, right, we're, we're in this, yeah. that some sense we are partially, not necessarily to blame, but we're the reason that he's on the cross, right? Because mm-hmm. he's loved us. He loves us so much. He wants a relationship with us that he lived and died for us and now lives again for us, right? It's like, it's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who, who in your life do you love enough to where you would actually, like, do, yeah. go to Live that extent, you know? Forward. Yeah. Like, and especially if it's somebody, let's say somebody who hates you, let's yeah. say somebody who like takes every yeah. advantage to hurt you. Yeah, it's easy you know, to love your friends and love your family, oh, yeah. but somebody that you hate, your it's, enemies. Mm, that is mm. what Jesus talks about. Right? Mm. That's, That's so really true. good. Thank you for listening to part one of three of my conversation with Eric Giuseppe Ramazzini. Stay tuned for parts two and three coming in the next couple weeks. Also stay tuned for Ronil and I going through Matthews chapter three and four. As always, subscribe to the channel and give us a like, and that way you'll be notified of upcoming videos. Thanks for listening and have a great day.